Place your hand to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your promises that will never fail. Thank you for our brothers and sisters, for everyone here. Lord, we pray you put victory in everybody's life in Jesus' name. Any arrow, any attack of the devil, quench it. Cancel it. Break it. Destroy it. And keep your people free in Jesus' name. Confirm miracle in every life today. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you. I said, God bless you. Thank you very much. You can sit down. Today we're going into the Word of God and we're looking at Ephesians again. Ephesians chapter 6. And the verse we're looking at today is verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, when we shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. As you look at this verse of scripture, and it says, above all, that he is, has been talking about different pieces of the armor of the Christian soldier. And now he comes to this and he says, above all, which means this is one you must not forget. This is one you must hold on to. This is one you must jealously guard. This is one above all, beyond all, on top of them all, take the shield of faith. You know, he could have said just that, take the shield of faith. But then he's saying, taking the shield of faith. What's the difference between take the shield of faith and then taking the shield of faith? It means keep on taking it. Keep on taking it. You wake up in the morning before you go out, take it. You come back and then you meet another challenge at home, take it. And then your wife has not had a child, then you remember that if you only believe all things are possible, take it. And then your wife is pregnant and the pregnancy is being threatened, take it. And then you are in the ministry, it appears that you might fail, you might fall, take it. Taking, taking, taking the shield of faith. Wherewith ye shall be able, you will be able. Now, listen to this. Out of mouth is out of mind. Uh, I know what you normally say. We normally say out of sight is out of mind. But I'm going to tell you this. Out of mouth is out of Mind. Let me say it another way. What you express is what you impress. What you express with your mouth is what you impress on your mind. When you say, I am not able, you impress that on your mind. What you express is what you impress. You impress negativity into your mind, into your subconscious. I am weak. You express it, you impress it. I am not able. You express it, you impress it. What you express with your mouth is what you impress on your mind. But out of mouth is out of mind. Cut it out of your mouth. Never say again, I am not able, because you are able. I said you are able. You never know what you can do until you rise up and do it. I was reading about a woman, 75 years of age. She had a son. The son is in the 50s, about 51, 52. And the son was repairing a car in the garage of the house. And then the jack got used and that fell on the man. And the man screamed out. And then the woman, 75 years of age, had the scream of her son. And there was nobody in the, around in the community. And the woman, 75 years of age, seen the feet of the legs of the son sticking out. And the car 
on that son. The woman bent down, lifted up that car, and the son came out. After the woman did that, then people came around and said, Can you do it again? No. I cannot do it again. Why? At that time when she saw the challenge, the blood ran into the right place. And they call it the adrenal. And they ran and they all of a sudden a surge, a surge of strength, a surge of energy and power came into her and she lifted up that vehicle because she wanted to save the life of her son. Many things you think you cannot do. When the challenge comes, you will do it. Don't ever let the devil hear it from your mouth that you are not able. You are able. I said you are able. You will weep the devil. You will destroy the devil. The power of God be mighty in your life in Jesus' name. Where with ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You will do it. Faith for permanent victory. You will have victory. Every day victory. Every time victory. Permanent victory you will have in Jesus' name. Number one, the shield and protection of faith. The shield and protection of faith. Number two, the strength and the power of faith. The strength, the power of faith. Number three, the sufficiency and the possibilities of faith. The sufficiency and the possibilities of faith. Number one, the shield of faith. Isn't that what the Bible says here? It says above all, taking the shield of faith. Taking the shield of faith. What's the shield used for? Well, just that word is very clear. To shield away something. To shield away evil. To shield away attack. To shield away affliction, to shield away a curse, to shield away the arrow of the enemy in your life. They will never catch you again. In First Chronicles chapter 12, First Chronicles chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 8. And the Gadites there separated themselves unto David into the hold, to the wilderness, men of might. And men of war feed for the battle that could handle shield and buckler. That could handle shield and buckler. And then it says, whose faces were like the faces of lions and were as sweet as the rose upon the mountains. It tells us these were men of war. Valiant men, mighty men, courageous men. And it says, one of the pieces of armor that they had is a shield. And they knew how to handle the shield. Actually, Paul the Apostle was making use of the Roman soldier. And you see the Roman soldiers, they were strapped to their hands, the shield of iron or the shield of brass. And then, when they throw the arrow at them, instead of striking them, they will defend themselves with a shield. Have you seen those Santeriot policemen? And they come into a particular community where there's rioting. And then they hold the shield because they know that some of those rioters will be throwing stones at them, broken bottles at them. But they have learned how to use the shield to shield themselves, to protect themselves from the attack and from all the things that they be throwing at them. Now, what shield do you even have? Let me show you the shield we have in Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15, reading from verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham. In a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am thy shield, and thine exceeding great reward, I am thy shield. No wonder, all the property of Abraham got shielded him. 
And all the children of Abraham, God shielded them. And the wife of Abraham, God shielded her. And Abraham himself, God shielded him. And God protected him. The shield and the protection of faith. God said, I am thy shield. Do you know that the Almighty God is your shield? It will not allow any attack to come upon your life. It will not attack. And now affliction to come upon your life. As they are coming. Before they come, he knew that they will be coming. Therefore, he will come and shield you here. And he will shield you on the right hand. He will shield you on the left hand. He will shield you in the front. He will shield you behind. And underneath you are the everlasting arms. And then he tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 33. Deuteronomy chapter 33. And I'm reading from verse 27. The Deuteronomy 33, verse 27. The eternal God is thy refuge. Did you go to sleep? I said the eternal God is your refuge. Underneath at the everlasting arms, he shall thrust out thine, the enemy from before thee. He will do it. If you wanted to do it, you couldn't do it properly, and you couldn't do it completely, the Almighty God will crush and conquer all your enemies. He shall thrust out the enemy from before thee, and shall say, destroy them. Israel, they shall dwell in safety and loan the fountain of Jacob, shall be upon a land of coin and wine. Also, the heavens shall drop down dew. The Lord will refresh you. And the Lord will refill you. Every time that your bucket or your bottle or your cup is running dry, the dew of heaven will send rain upon you again. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto the O people, saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help. He is your shield. Those enemies will not catch you. And they will not crush you. All the time take with you the shield of faith. The shield of thy help. Who is the sword of thy excellency. Thine enemy shall be found liars unto thee. And thou shalt tread upon the high places. It tells us in Psalm 3. Psalm 3 I'm reading from verse 1. Psalm 3 reading from verse 1. Lord how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. You know, when you think about the life of David, something surprises you. If you put David on the one hand, and you put Saul on the other hand, and you say, who has more enemies? David or Saul? David or Saul? David! Who was more valiant, David or Saul? Who was more courageous, David or Saul? Who was more promoted, David or Saul? Who was more exalted, David or Saul? Because God was a shield. Even though he had enemies, God shielded him. And even the other fellow that didn't appear to have too many enemies, what did he make in life? Never think that because you have enemies, you will not make it in life. If God is shielding you from those enemies, you will make it. In fact, you have made it already. It is like, you know, they have issued your certificate, but it is still in the office. But they have issued it. And there is nothing they can do about it. And nobody can change it. And your name is there already. And then, when we come and we say, you have succeeded already. And you are exalted already. And you are passed already. And you are promoted already. Then you say, but it is not in my hand. What does that mean? But it's in the office over there. And then you just walk there. You say, I, are you begging them? It's your own. You say, I come. What did you come for? Ah, uh, look at my face. Look at my IG, identity card. And look at my name. Bring my certificate there. And you know, over there, because they're looking for bribe, they say, they cannot see the fire. Never mind, they will find it out. Because of the court of heaven, they will never lose your fire. And you are promoted already. You see, David, even though the enemies were there, the Lord had said, I promoted you, don't worry. I am your shield, and I am the power, and the strength of your protection. In verse 2, many there be which say, 
of my soul. There is no help for him in God. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the litter up of mine head. That's what I told you. You've got it already. Yeah. Psalm 91. In Psalm 91, here is your privilege. And here is what the Lord has for you. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. Who is that person? It's me now. I said it's me. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers. And under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. And when you are shielded, when the shield is there, what's the implication? Verse 5, thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. Nor for the arrow that flies by day. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side. Now, when those people begin to fall, don't say, maybe it will be my turn next. It will never be your turn. Remember, what you express is what you impress. Remember, what comes out of your mouth is what takes hold of your mind. And remember, out of mouth is out of mind. If it is not in your mouth, you say, that negative language the language of doubt and the language of defeat and the language of depression will never be in my mouth again. If it's not in your mouth, it will not be in your mind. Don't express it and you will not impress it upon yourself. Although they are falling by your side, you will stand. And then it says, not for the arrow that flies by day, not for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, not for the destruction that wasted at noon day. Then it says in verse 8, only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee. You go out, you'll come back safely. You travel, you'll come back safely. Anywhere you go, the angels of the Lord are following you. It says, say, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague, any plague, any plague. You know, HIV is a plague, it will not come near you. And tuberculosis is a common plague nowadays, it will not come near you. Ulcer is a plague, it will not come near your dwelling. And then cancer is a plague, it will never come near you. Brain tumor is a plague, it will never come near your dwelling. It says over here, neither shall any plague come out of that a being come near thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Now we don't have time, but if you know the story of those angels, when the angel came against the army that wanted to destroy the people of God in Isaiah chapter 37, you can read it later, the angel came and destroyed 185,000 of those enemies. How many enemies do you have? Do you have up to 180,000? I said you have up to 185,000 enemies? Ah, if one angel can destroy all those enemies in one night, your enemies are finished. I pity anybody that says, you know, he's going to run after you. He doesn't have any other assignment to do. He looks at my dear sister here and says, you know, you, I'm going to run after you. When they say that, don't hide yourself inside your house. And don't say, those enemies are after me. Then come out 
I said, come out and dress well. When I say dress well, I say dress in the armor of the Lord. Put on the whole armor of God and take the shield of faith in your hand and walk in front of them like this. They'll be looking at you like this. And then somebody will say, that's the person you were looking for. He said, I don't know what. When I saw her again, I cannot move anymore. And I cannot talk anymore. I cannot say anything anymore. Just looking at her makes me afraid. They'll be afraid of you. For it shall give the angels charge over them to keep you in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands. Let's not dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shall not trample under your feet. They are under your feet. I said they are under your feet. Number two, the strength and the power of faith. The strength and the power of faith. You see, in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Ephesians chapter 6, we're looking at verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able. The shield of faith gives you ability. Able then ability you are able therefore you have ability and it gives you strength and it gives you power in Joshua chapter 1 Joshua chapter 1 I'm reading to you from verse 5 Joshua chapter 1 verse 5 there shall not any man be able to stand before you well, if there's no ma no magician, no sorcerer, no witch, no wizard, no fortune teller, and nobody like Balaam will be able to stand before you, then you have supernatural strength, you have supernatural power, and you have supernatural protection, there shall no man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. You know, some people say, I used to be strong. Don't say that again. The implication is, I'm not strong anymore. I used to be agile and active. Don't say that anymore. The implication is you're no more agile and active. I used to be bold. Don't say that anymore. That means that you are not bold anymore. I know myself. I used to be courageous. Don't say that anymore because the implication is when you say, I used to be, it means that you are no more. But then it says, all the days of your life. All the days of your life. Ah, but you say, Pastor, eh, to tell the truth and the reality, I am weak. How do you know you are weak? I feel weak. I'm not talking about your feeling. I'm talking about your faith. You don't live by feeling. You live by faith. What you express is what you impress. You see, when you say, I am weak, and you express it, you impress it upon yourself. When, for example, we're going to service on Sunday morning, and then maybe you are a preacher, or you are to handle the search, the scripture, and then early that morning, or maybe it was in the night, you felt like going to the toilet, and you were having run in stomach, and then you went to the toilet, you came back, after one hour, you woke up again and went to the toilet. And then you woke up in the morning, you remember, I am to handle such the scripture this morning. And then you say, be careful what you say. I said, be careful what you say. Because what you express is what you impress. Now, you are the one to control your stomach. Your stomach is not to control you. And your bowels, they are not to control you. You are the one to control your bowels by the watch of faith. I am the teacher of such the scripture this morning. I am able and nothing will hinder me. I am but your stomach. That's feeling. That's feeling. That's what I'm feeling in my stomach. I'm not running my life on the basis of feeling. I'm running my life on the basis of faith. And I say that this morning, although the stomach is like that, then I overlook it, I neglect it, and I say, I will do what the Lord has called me to do. I am prepared. I've done the study. I've done everything I ought to do. And this thing will not hinder me. This morning I will teach. And this morning I will do.
feel good to be church. And this morning, I will do everything well. And then your wife says, I saw the way you are, you know, going to a church later in the night. Can I call the coordinator so that they will choose another person? Be careful what you say. What you express is what you impress. If you say, my wife, I'm feeling weak. The moment you say that, if you check up your life, you feel weaker. It's like, you know, your joints are down. But if you say, no, don't call the coordinator, I am strong. I said I am strong. And I can stand. 13 minutes, 25 minutes to teach that the scripture, I will teach. And nobody will know that anything happened in the night. And then you come. By the time you wake up and then you take your bath and you dress up. And then you say, I am going to teach this morning. I'm going to teach effectively this morning. I am strong this morning. I'm a child of God this morning. I'm the teacher in our local church this morning. What you express is what you impress. Your mind will pick it up. You will have the mind of Christ. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Because you express it, you impress it, and then everybody will see. And then you come. And then you will not be thinking in your mind. <laughs> this one that I'm trying. Are you trying or trusting? You see, your language, your vocabulary matters. This one, I am trying to do. Am I sure that this one will carry me? If you are trying, it will not carry you. If you are trusting, the Lord will carry you. And so you see, it says there, As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee. Nor forsake thee. The Lord will not fail you. And the Lord will not forsake you. Do you see how your amen is getting lower and lower? Praise the Lord. And you know, when the devil comes in the night and then he wants to threaten you, all of a sudden you hear my voice and then you hear the amen of these people. And you know, the devil will be confused. Because when the devil hears my voice in your room, and then the devil hears a loud amen in your room, then you rise up, and then you say you want to attack the devil, to say you want to bind him. He is already terrified because of the amen. And then he has gone away in Jesus' name. <laughs> you know, and those uh, people in Jericho, they didn't know what to do. Because the people in Jericho, uh, they just they were looking at the children of Israel. They were just moving around, and they said, "What are these people doing? These Israelites coming away from Egypt? What are they doing, trying to do?" And then all of a sudden, on the seventh day, after they went around seven times, and Joshua said, "Shout! Don't shout now! I don't do it to shout." And Joshua said, "Shout!" And they shouted. Those people in Jericho, they were totally confused. And when they shout, all the walls came down. All your walls are down already. <laughs> Romans chapter 10, but Romans chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 17. Romans chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 17. So then faith come by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Hearing by the word of God. That's how you build up yourself. Hearing the word of God. Every time. Jude. I'm reading from verse 20. Jude. Verse 20. But ye beloved. Building up yourselves. In your most holy faith. Building up yourselves. In your most holy faith. How do you build up yourself. In your most holy faith. Many ways. The cases that have helped you. To build up your faith. You listen to it many, many times, many days, many weeks. Until the sin is inside you. Until you can even repeat it from the beginning to the end. Until it has formed part of, of your life. Building up yourself on your most holy faith. If you will do that, you will never be weak. In the work of the Lord, you'll be moving on and on, and you will succeed every time. In Joshua chapter 14, Joshua chapter 14, I'm reading from verse 6. Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, the Canaanite, 
said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me, and thee, in Kadesh Panea, forty years old was I, when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Panea to espy out the land, and I brought him word again as it was in mine heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. Don't borrow the confession of other people. Don't borrow the utterances of other people. Don't speak the language of other people. When the twelve spies came back from spying out the land of Canaan, he said, we be not able. That's what they expressed. That's what is, was impressed on them. There are giants in the land. That's what they expressed. That's what is, was impressed on them. And then they said, we are like grasshoppers in their sight. That's what they expressed. And that's what was impressed on them. But Caleb said, don't talk like that. We are well able. Do you see the story there? The people that said, they were not able, they were not able. The people that said, only Joshua and Caleb, we are able. Those were the people that were able. Now, what was the difference between Joshua and Caleb and the rest of the ten? Because see, they went on the same road. They saw the same giants. And they climbed the same mountain. They saw the same fruit, and they came back the same way. Why did they have a difference in language? Because since they saw the same giants, seeing the giants, the ten became afraid. But seeing the giants, the two became courageous. What's the difference? Here is the difference. Look up here, please. In the middle here, we have the giants. And then over here, on my left, we have the spies, twelve of them. On this other side, on my right, we have the Almighty God. When the ten looked at the giants, they compared the giants with themselves. And therefore, they saw themselves as grasshoppers, and they saw the giants as big, unconquerable. Irresistible, powerful. The two, they saw the giants, but they compared the giants with the Almighty God. And when they compared the giants with the Almighty God, then they saw that the giants were very small in comparison with God. When you see a problem, it depends on where you are making your comparison. If you are making the comparison with your natural strength, you will feel weak. If you are making the comparison with the strength of the Almighty God, then you know this is no problem. I said this is no problem. And this sickness, this is nothing. Compare it with God, don't compare it with your natural strength. And then we have here Joshua. Joshua said, I only follow the Lord. He said, now behold in verse 10, the Lord has kept me alive. The Lord will keep you alive. As he said, these 40 and 5 years, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now lo, I am this day for score, that's 80, 85 years old, as yet I am strong. Everybody say, I am strong. And you know, if you look at some preachers, and some of these preachers, they emphasize just what they know. And one of those preachers is Kenneth Hagee. He said that all his messages were mainly coming to Mark chapter 11, verse 23. You will have what you say. He may read Exodus, he may read Genesis, when he comes to the conclusion, he will come to Mark 11.23. He may go to Ephesians, he may go to Revelation, when he comes to conclusion, he will come to Mark chapter 11 verse 23. And you see, he believed that what he said is what he will receive. 
He will teach holiness, he will teach righteousness, he will teach every other thing. But at the conclusion, he will come to Mark chapter 11 verse 23. And that man laid, and there was no record of sickness in his life. And then, when he was about to die, and that's what he had been preaching. They were in the breakfast, on the breakfast table. And then they said grace on the table. And, not, and this time I think it was about 90, getting near to 90. And then at this time now, after the table, he just said, Thank you, my wife, bye, and smiled, and he was gone. You see, when, if you say it, what you express is what you impress. And then, jealous man. When I was a younger, younger Christian, I read a lot of Tielos Pond. And then in the 70s, Tielos Pond will come to Nigeria. He'll go to Benin. He'll go to Abba. He'll go to a lot of places. And then he will, you know, he will teach. And then he'll, he'll leave his film. That time, he'll give the films to those who wanted to evangelize. Like we now give our videos and, you know, they take it about an evangelize. And the Tielos Pond, he owned images on healing and faith. Healing and faith. And, uh, you know, that was in the 70s that he was here. And uh, Tiel Osborne was in a particular meeting. And then the man that he introduced him said, Everybody, it was a large crowd, everybody welcome Tiel Osborne at 80 years of age. And then Tiel Osborne came out, his back was not bent, he was standing straight like this, and his voice, because I recognize his voice, his voice like the voice was in 1973 when he came to Nigeria, at 80 years of age, because he believed the Lord, and if you believe the Lord, it will be unto you according to your faith in Jesus' name. You see Caleb, Caleb said, as yet, I am 85 years of age, and as my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. You have become an achiever already. I come to point number three, the sufficiency and the possibilities of faith. Let's come back now to uh, Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, we're looking at verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench, how many darts? All the fiery darts of the wicked, the sufficiency and the possibilities of faith. You will make it. And the same power will be in your life in Jesus' name. Look at Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, reading from verse 8. The centurion and Saddam said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only. Speak the word only. If you can live like that, and you live on the basis of the word only, not on your feeling. Not on how the condition of your body is. Not on how the economy of the country is. Speak the word only. And my servant shall be healed. And my wife shall be healed. And my child shall be healed. And I myself will be healed. Speak the word only. And the word is coming to you today. It will do good in your life. We're told in verse 13, Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. As you have believed, so it will be done unto you. That's man, let's look at a woman in Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15, verse 28. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Is it possible for a woman to have faith? Is it possible for a woman to have great faith? Is it possible for a woman to have the gift of faith? Is it possible for a woman to bring healing to all the people? I'm asking those questions because you know, it's like, you know, in our church, the healing ministry is for the men, almost. And even though there are prayer warriors and there are women there in the prayer warriors team, it appears that those who cast out devils, the majority of them, the vast majority are men. 
And then those who have confidence, when they come, it's like, you know, it's the men that can do it. And when you are thinking about in your district, for example, when you have a problem, when you have a challenge, and you are thinking of somebody to pray for you, you go to the coordinator. You don't go to the women coordinator. Because the impression you have is that she is a woman leader. And the women cannot have the faith to heal. I transfer that faith into your life. Men and women, you will do the works of Christ in Jesus' name. He that believeth on me and she that believeth on me. The works I do, he shall do and she shall do. And greater works than this shall you do because I go unto the Father. Women, folks, rise up because the power of the Lord is upon you in Jesus' name. And of course, we men, you'll be conquering and conquering. And nothing shall be impossible for you in Jesus' name. You know, it's like what the Lord said unto Elijah. Anoint Ahazel, anoint Jehu, and anoint Elisha. Whoever escapes from Ahaziah, Jehu will get him. And whoever escapes from Jehu, and then Elisha will get him. I'm telling you that we all have power. And whoever escapes from the coordinator, the women coordinator will heal them. And whoever escapes from the women coordinator, the solar leaders and the women rest we will heal them. And when you have a coordinator, you have women coordinator, you have youth leader, you have campus leader, you have all those people, and they agree together in faith, you will run away Satan out of that district. Because this woman had faith, O oh woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee as thou wilt. Be it unto thee as thou wilt. It is done already. In Mark chapter 16, verse 17, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, what will they do? They will cast out devils. Will they take in devils? Uh, you know, they sometimes they look up here, brothers and sisters. Uh, many, many years ago, I'm talking about the early 70s, and even before Deeper Life started. And we're going around with Scripture Union people. And those Scripture Union people, you know, good, good people, and we preach salvation. Then when we began, some of us in the Scripture Union, we began to reach yellow's bond. Then we also began to, you know, cast out devils and to heal the sick. And then there were some of us, and they said, no, I don't want to be near any place they are casting out devils because I'm afraid it may come on me. They will take it in instead of casting them out. And then we said, a few of us, we said, Jesus did not say, take in devils. He said, cast out devils. And then some of the people will say, they were Christians, they were born again. Then they will come to us and they will say, brother, that's how they called us. I wasn't a pastor at that time, I was just brother. And to be a brother is a great name. Yeah. Praise the Lord. They will say, brother, cast out the devil for me. I say, and then I will say, are you a Christian? Yes, I'm a Christian. Do you believe the Lord? Yes, I believe the Lord. I then will say, where did the devil, the demon, have chance to come into your life? Because it says, if you believe, you will cast out devils. You will not take in devils. It is unbelief that takes in demon. It is faith that casts out devils. Which one do you have? Faith or unbelief? I have faith in the Lord. I will not take in devil. I will cast out devil. You will not take in the devil. You will cast out devil. There is no demon in your mind. There is no demon in your brain. There is no demon in your spirit. There is no demon in your family. Because you are a believer, you will cast out devils. They will never come to you. I said they will never come to you because you have the shield of faith above all. Take in the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to cast out devils and to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take off serpents. If they drink any deadly sin, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay their hands on the sea and they shall recover. Where are those hands? I said, where are those hands? 
uh, if your hands are already anointed and you will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover yet the first person to lay the hand on is yourself lay that hand on yourself stand up on your feet you are healed already I said you are healed already. I said you are delivered already. Your weaknesses are taken away. You are a believer and your hands are anointed. Lay that hand on yourself and get your healing. Lay that hand on yourself and get your deliverance. Lay the hand on yourself and get your courage and your boldness. And the devil will never have anything to do with your life anymore. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today because you have given us faith. Oh Lord, I pray you transfer into the heart, into the life, into the ministry of every brother and every sister here, great faith and faith of faith that this faith will work in their lives in Jesus' name. The Lord has lifted you up, you will never be defeated. Nothing will destroy your life. Disease will run away from your body. Those anointed hands of have laid upon yourself now will cast away every negative thing in Jesus' name. Every sickness and infirmity in your body, every weakness, I cast away right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. And then you are going back to your district, you are going back to your church location. When you lay those hands on the sick, they shall recover. When you stand and speak the word of authority, you men and you women, you will heal the sick in Jesus' name. We'll be hearing testimonies from every district, testimonies from every zone, testimonies from every family, testimonies of progress, testimonies of power, testimonies of miracle, testimonies of supernatural. I pray, Lord, confirm it in everyone in Jesus' name. No man shall be able to stand before you. Every time when you wake up, you express the words of faith, it will be impressed on your life. And everybody will see you have become another man. You have become another woman. You are strong, you will not be weak. You are healed, you will not be sick. You are uplifted and you will not be down. And you will be going on from conquering to conquering. From progress to progress for the rest of your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah.